G'day, this is Hayden, vk 7 H, and today we're going to be looking at the Minikits EME220 uh, VHF preamplifier. Uh, what we're going to do today is some tests to see uh, what the gain of the amplifier is. The uh, uh, typical gain is uh, adjustable in this particular preamp, uh, the minimum being uh, 10 dB with uh, the typical range being 18.5 maximum uh, as a little trim pot on board this amplifier for that very purpose. So we're going to do some tests today and see how it performs. Okay, so what we've done is connected our leads to our um, generator here. Uh, out of the RF out, we're just going via a 3 dB uh, 50 ohm load to make sure that uh, we don't get any sort of impedance mismatches or anything like that. Uh, coming out of here, we want this to be uh, 50 ohms. Uh, we come out uh, via um, a little um, patch lead um, through the uh, to the BNC connector uh, that our amplifier uses BNC connectors so I've got uh, two BNC's there with just a barrel in between and we've got another cable which runs uh, back into the RF detector input so the one thing to also note with this is that uh, we want to make sure we don't exceed the 10 dBm uh, input maximum for the um, detector input. Now we know roughly what the gain of this uh, amplifier is. It's roughly a maximum about 18.5 dB. So what we want to do is we want to offset that in our signal generator. So we can see that there now. We've just reduced our uh, output from our generator to minus 20. So what we're going to do is go ahead and go to the analyzer screen. We are going to check our x-axis. We can see that we've got a start frequency of 144 megahertz, a center frequency of 144.5, and a stop frequency of 145 megahertz. So that should give us a nice uh, sweep of the uh, the primary. Um, area where I'll be using this particular amplifier, that being uh, the low end of two meters. So we want to untick uh, continuous because we don't want to do a continuous sweep. So we'll do a sweep with our test leads to uh, which we've done there now. We can see a minus uh, 23 uh, dBm uh, plot there. We want to uh, store that value and then make it relative to that value. So now we've uh, got our line sitting at uh, zero dBm. Next we want to go to the Y axis and we just want to increase the maximum scale a little bit and perhaps we can reduce the minimum scale so that we can get a bit more of a better reading Okay, so what we need to do now is connect the amplifier and power it on. Okay, so this is our setup now. Um, merely all I've done is remove the barrel and uh, connected the RF output from the generator into the antenna uh, input of the amplifier. And then we've connected the, uh, the transceiver uh, output of the amplifier into the detector. And uh, just got a 12 volt battery here powering, uh, powering this amplifier up, so we'll see what the gain looks like. And we'll hit start. Okay, we can see the gain of this amplifier at 144 megahertz is 5.34, which is a little on the low side, which is interesting. Uh, what we need to do now is increase the gain pot assuming that I'm turning it the right way. Now that should be maximum gain, so if we run the test again, we can see the line has now increased to 9.21 dB, which is much, much lower than the uh, rated, uh, or the, the specifications uh, are for this particular preamplifier. Uh, the, uh, the gain, of course, being again a typical max gain, 18 and a half minimum is uh, 10 dB. 145 megahertz so obviously uh, with this kit 
uh, something has gone amiss with uh, my construction techniques. So we can uh, we can investigate this and do further measurements to find uh, what's uh, actually gone wrong. After a bit of uh, fine tuning, I've managed to find out that uh, one of the capacitors on the input uh, input filter to the um, to the uh, the amplifier chip had actually uh, uh, was a bad connection or had uh, come off the board. So I've replaced that, and um, I only had uh, it was it's an 8.2 picofarad capacitor, but I only had an eight. So I've uh, done that now. Now this is a sweep of the entire um, spectrum from 50 megahertz to 500. We can see a peak there. It's saying 149 megahertz. Um, if we actually compress that, it's actually uh, a little bit a uh, little bit lower in frequency. I tuned it for 147 megahertz. And um, the gain is 14.35 uh, uh, dB. So, and what we've got here is if we actually move our cursor along now, the uh, there's a dip, quite a substantial dip at uh, about 70 megahertz, which is um, sitting at um, a minus 11 uh, dB. So the difference there is uh, about 25 dB. Uh, down, which um, according to the band rejection of the um, the uh, specifications is supposed to be 40 dB at 50 megahertz, but uh, perhaps my uh, um, replacements uh, messed up the tuning a little bit there. It's a, at 50 megahertz, it's around about uh, what's that there? If I can focus in on it, about 3 dB, so uh, it's at about 17, so not quite 20. I'm not too worried about that. If we actually go up a bit further to uh, 430 megahertz, uh, it's actually uh, below the scale of the the device. Uh, the band rejection up there is uh, 60 dB. So um, if we add the gain of our amplifier, it's uh, the difference there um, is uh, quite substantial. So yeah, quite happy with that now. Um, if we actually, um, if I can do this without bumping things. If we actually do a measurement now of the band a bit closer to two meters, this will give us an indication of uh, what it's doing. So if we actually change our start frequency to say uh, 130 megahertz and our stop frequency is um, 170 megahertz, so that'll give us a nice bandwidth of about 40 megs there. Uh, we go ahead and just do our cable only test, which uh, we're uh, our generator of course is minus 20, and um, outputting at minus 20, and I've got that 3 dB pad, so we can see they're minus uh, 22.86. Go ahead and store that value. and hit start and we can see the gain rising and then falling again so the gain is 14.33 db peak at uh, 147 megahertz which is as we um, as we read the uh, minimum gain is 10 db at 145 megahertz according to the specifications so uh, we're uh, we're above that there so quite happy with that that's quite an improvement over uh, what was uh, uh, at the beginning in our first test, so it sounds like uh, that may have fixed the uh, the problem with that uh, preamplifier. Um, the test uh, setup is exa exactly the same, depending on what uh, what you're using. Um, this uh, this particular device is uh, very handy for these uh, small type uh, tests, rather than getting in a quite a large uh, test set with a tracking generator. So uh, it works well for that purpose. All right, hope you learned something from this video, and um, until next time.